Hi everyone. So this is going to be my first part initial impressions of the Daniel Hurd's um, Maria 350 integrated amplifier with the uh, Ava speakers. Uh, Ellison's going to put in some pictures to show you what the system looks like. The speakers are little tiny bookshelves. They're six and a half inch uh, uh, two-way speakers with a one inch uh, dome tweeter, silk dome tweeter. Um, stand mounted, <coughs> so you're going to need to put stands underneath the speakers or put it on a console or something like that. And the Maria is a little tiny integrated amplifier. Um, when you when you look at it, it doesn't look like much because it doesn't weigh anything. Anyway, we'll get to that. All right, so here is uh, here are my uh, initial impressions. As I say, initial because while I've already spent quite a lot of time listening to it. Uh, I haven't gotten to the bottom of everything yet. Uh, I'll explain that in a moment. Um, first of all, let me talk a little bit about the, um, the specifics of the unit. The Maria integrated is rated at 350 watts into 8 ohms and 500 watts into 4 ohms. Mark says that the Maria will actually produce much more power than that, but they're conservative and they rate them for that power. The, what's also unique about the Maria is that it's built around an integrated circuit that Daniel Hertz and their engineers developed from, from silicone up. So basically the software and so on were all uh, embedded into the chip and, and a company makes it for Daniel Hertz. And this is quite unique because I don't know of any other audio company, there may be some, but I don't know of any high-end audio company that has gone to the expense of doing this. This chip provides the power. It also does the digital to analog conversion. Uh, it has the software that's embedded in it so that Daniel Hertz and their team members, and at some point myself as well, once I learn how to do so, we can tune the amplifier to optimize your speakers. So if you've got B&W speakers, you've got Magicos, you've got whatever it is, the amplifier can be tuned to optimize for those speakers. The amplifier <coughs> also has uh, a technology called uh, C-Wave. C-Wave is a patent pending technology that Daniel Hertz, um, uh, I guess, invented after 30 or so years of thinking about why digital is not what it sh should be. Why doesn't it sound good? Why doesn't it sound amazing? Um, and they've got that built in. The um, chip also has the ability to uh, um, make the amplifier into mono, bridge it into for more power. It can also allow it to be uh, part of a bi system. It also has the active crossovers built in. So there's a lot to this chip. And uh, so, uh, but what's also interesting is that it weighs nothing. It, it's like 15 pounds maybe. Um, the enclosure is made of perspex. It's just hand cut hand polished by artisans in uh, Venice. Um, uh, just black mirror, beautiful finish. Just such a shine that it's, it's, it's just sensuous. The knobs in the front are hand polished, silver, stainless steel, I think. And the contrast between the black, the font, the lettering, and the black perspex is, just reminds me of elegance of, of sophistication, uh, just stunning. Um, so that's what the amplifier is and it sells for 12,000 euro or 17,750 Canadian. The AVA speakers are, as I, may, as I said earlier, just a, a simple, typically uh, two-way bookshelf. You've seen lots of them uh, and very nondescript. If you would look at the speaker, you would not think of anything. The tweeter is a silk dome and um, he claims that the speaker will go down to 30 hertz, which we'll get to in a moment. 89 dB sensitivity, 8 ohm load, so should be pretty easy to drive. So even if you don't use Maria's amp amplifiers, you can use other amplifiers to give it a great result. Okay, price is 7,000 euro or 10,350 Canadian. Doesn't come with stands, there are optional stands. Uh, I believe uh, they make two versions. We ordered the um, acrylic ones, they're stunning and they weigh a ton. I mean, you pick up the acrylic stand with the speaker. The speaker by itself weighs maybe 15 pounds, 20 pounds, doesn't weigh very much. You bolt it together and you carry it, it's like a workout. It's beautiful and it's so heavy. 
Um, okay, so sound. Normally, when we do these kinds of videos, we we talk we call it the good, bad, and ugly. In this case, I'm going to start first with spectacular. This system, in some ways, is just simply stunning, spectacular, amazing. I mean, you can go on and on and on. It, 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 let's start with the bass. As I said earlier, Mark claims these little speakers go down to 30 hertz. The first time I saw it, I go, uh, well, there's a part of Mark that is a bit of a showman. Not that he hasn't uh, consistently proven himself. I'm just saying that he can uh, uh, sound like that. And yet, we hooked it up, and with no effort whatsoever, the speakers just go all the way down. My, my mouth dropped. How is that little speaker, how is it possible? There's no subwoofer. There's no big 12-inch woofers. It's just a little tiny 6.5-inch woofer, and it goes all the way down. Um, and I thought, well, maybe it's the room. Let me play some challenging music. So I pulled up Beyonce, Partition. Those of you who don't know this cut, try it. Be careful. Within about 30 seconds, if you're not careful, it can damage your speakers. So I had the volume cranked fairly high. And when that first bass note kicked in, I, I saw my woofer uh, um, bottoming. But it was no problem. And then it just kept playing deep bass. I turned the volume down a little bit, just enough so that it wasn't bottoming. And it just went all the way down. It shook my concrete floors. My, my guys came from the front counter all the way back to see what was going on. And then they saw these tiny little speakers. And they were all aghast. They could not believe these. the system could do this. Uh, I could go on and on about bass recordings, but you know you can play your, your favorites. I, all I can tell you is that at normal to slightly higher than normal volumes, it will astound you. But here's the other thing. At low volumes, the bass is still there. Typically, with small speakers, if it can do some bass, it's oftentimes because the sensitivity is very low and you have to turn the volume up and then you get some bass. Not with these. When you turn the volume down, the bass is still there. Yeah, you miss a bit of the heft, but it's still there. It's shocking. So that's the bass. Um, the leading edge of the music, that's another thing that is stunning about these speakers. It's as if you're listening to electrostatic speakers. If you've never heard electrostatic speakers, I don't know how to describe it, but the speed at which the speakers can produce the, the impulse is just absolutely fantastic. Um, that is the one thing that I noticed that is so different uh, uh, compared to other speakers. Um, and as a result of that, it sounds more lively. It sounds more real. The micro and the macro dynamics have life. A typical speaker or a typical system that misses sound of that, some of that will sound more polite, maybe more relaxed, warmer, all the kinds of adjectives that audiophiles we like to use. But it will also lose the life and the passion that real music has. And again, I can give you all kinds of examples, but I'm just telling you just to make things simple. This has the leading edges and spades, but without the kind of harshness that some speakers might give you to give you the sense of the leading edge. Now, I'll go into uh, this a little bit more later. Here's another thing that's incredible. The internal tack is really, really, really good. So. Um, I usually don't do this, but I, uh, Mark was telling me that there's this gentleman, Steve Hoff, uh, Steve Hoff, sorry, has done a video and he really likes it. So as I was um, uh, uh, typing up my notes, I uh, read the, the um, blog that Steve um, put up and he talks about how the internal DAC is so good that he tried a bunch of different DACs, including uh, some very expensive ones, and he found that he preferred this DAC. And I thought, ah, hyperbole. I'm sure it's very good, but is it really that good? And I thought, you know what? I haven't yet had a chance to hear the DAC by itself. You know, so why don't you prove him wrong, Adrian? This will be a perfect chance. So I got together two of my favorite DACs. <coughs> One is the Audio Byte 
uh, stack. It's about fifty-seven, fifty-eight hundred dollars in Canada. <coughs> Beautiful power supply with with the DAC itself. I really like it. I've always liked it. It's it's a great buy at about that kind of price point. And then I took out my standard bearer, a uh, barrier, uh, my standard bearer, in the eleven thousand Canadian dollar price range, which is the PS Audio Direct Stream DAC Mark II upgraded to the latest firmware, the whole thing fully burnt in and so on. And I thought, okay, it might do better than the uh, audio bite, but I doubt that it will be as good as the PS Audio, because I know the PS Audio, it's superb. I like it very much. Anyway, first, <coughs> listen to the mirror by itself, took copious notes, and then I took the digital output from my streamer, which I was using the EverSolo as a streamer, uh, out into the audio bite matched the volumes, I'd already made all the notes and so on, and then played it back. Shocking. The, the, the audio bite sounded muffled, dull, in reverse phase. In it's, it's like instead of the transients coming out first and then going back, it was going back and coming out. It's like something's really odd. I checked phasing, I checked everything, everything was correct. It just sounded muffled, it lost its life. It was still very pleasant. Pleasant is not the issue. It lost life. And I thought, wow, this is, this is not good. So I immediately switched over to PS Audio and I thought, no, nah, PS Audio is gonna eat it for lunch. Made sure the, the, the levels were all matched and so on, switched over to PS Audio. Same thing. Now, PS Audio put up a better fight, no doubt about it, but it's still lost. This is insane. The PS Audio is an 11,000 DAC that I love. I'm sure that there are other DACs that some people will say, ah, Adrian, but you got to try this and try that and so on. I've tried a lot of DACs. I haven't tried every DAC in the world, but I've tried a lot of DACs, even ones that come directly to you, uh, sold directly to you, and so on. I've tried a bunch of them, and they're all pretty good, but I've always loved the PS Audio, so I've kept it. But the PS Audio, as good as it is, and it's still a wonderful DAC, didn't have the same kind of leading edge, didn't have the same kind of snap, didn't have the same kind of life, that zero to 60, that, that sense of jump, it didn't have it. It was dense sounding, which I liked, similar to the, um, the, the Maria. But what I can tell you is that the internal DAC of the Maria is very, very good. Call me astonished. All right, so let's go to good. Everything else is superb. I mean, mid-range, highs, sound staging, depth, imaging, all very good. As good as anything I can think of anywhere near its price. Remember, these speakers are about $11,000 without stands, right? And if I think of all the speakers that I sell in its price range, in one way or another, some speakers will do a little bit better here, a little bit better there. But overall, I can't think of a system that is as remarkably good as this is, right? Uh, the soundstage is, is as wide as uh, any other speakers that I've heard in our rooms uh, with any of the other systems, but the depth is actually better than the soundstage. You hear better layering, and the air and the, out of that tweeter, you'd almost swear that it was some sort of very exotic tweeter, but without any of the potential harshness. This was just very airy, very brilliant sounding but without any harshness, again. Um, uh, uh, just, I couldn't think of anything really bad about the sound. Everything was great, I was uh, mesmerized. And understand, I was trying very hard to nitpick. At the end of the day, I, I really couldn't. Um, all right, let's go with the bad. No remote. I've spoken to Mark about this multiple times, and in the end, he said, Adrian, the truth is, after all these years of developing and designing products, this is the most transparent volume control I know how to make. And uh, we are unable to fit a remote control to it or it would just take away from it. Now, uh, uh, most streamers have volume control, so if you really need to, you can use the uh, streamer uh, as a volume control or get off your butt, go over and adjust the volume. So that's what I did, and you know what? I don't regret it. Yes, yeah, it's a bit of work, but it's not that big a deal. Learn to live with it. Um, another bad, no balance inputs, which to me is kind of a downer because over the years, I've always enjoyed using balance connections whenever 
available and whenever possible, assuming that the product itself is a true balanced design. And so for some reason, the Maria doesn't have balanced inputs. Now, having said that, the Maria is dead silent. You can put your ear right to the speaker and you'll hear hardly anything at all. It's extremely quiet. So um, maybe it's just not necessary and, and Mark is trying to keep the circuit as simple as possible. Who knows? Price? Yeah, it's expensive. The, the Maria integrated amplifier is 17 change, 17.5, whatever it is, Canadian, 12,000 euro. It's not cheap. But then, is it really a bad? Because you've got a superb amplifier, uh, superb DAC, um, something that is elegant, that's uh, the form factor is simple, that doesn't produce a huge amount of heat, that um, doesn't you don't really need to worry about all sorts of cables and so on. So, sure, it's not for everybody, but it's a superbly wonderful uh, system. So maybe it's not so much a bad, but I put it there because, again, price is not exactly cheap. Um, this one is kind of bad. As beautiful as I think the Perspex is, and I love how the hand polishing just makes it pop, the black attracts dust like you wouldn't believe. And maybe it's our environment because who knows, but I'm constantly, every day, wiping it down because dust has landed on it and you can see it clearly. Uh, fingerprints, I mean, people come in and the first thing they do is go over and they turn the knobs and they touch it and so on and so all kinds of fingerprints. That is kind of a bad. All right, ugly, nothing. I couldn't find a single thing I could say that's ugly. Um, and I tried, believe me, I tried, I am cheap grew up with no money after all. I mean, so for me, spending the money is not easy. Uh, uh, Allison's behind the camera. She'll tell you when she asked me to buy something, I'll always make her justify that purchase. Not because we couldn't afford it, but I want her to tell me that it's necessary before we spend the money. So recently she said to me, yeah, let's buy some more of these SD cards because, you know, we want to have some backups and then so on. And so I said, okay, go look around and see a, a place that we can get it at the lowest price possible. <laughs> so she sent me a link to Amazon, you know, and, and uh, but that's, so a bit of context. And because of that, I tried really hard to find ugly and I couldn't. So anyway, uh, I said earlier that this is part one. Part two, I want to compare the amplifier to other amplifiers and then speakers to other speakers in a more direct way. Um, or maybe it's not even necessary because quite frankly, as a compare, as a setup, I, I am totally sold. If you told me that the system sold for what it, what it sells for, I would not be surprised. I, I, I would, if I were in the market and I had the budget for it, I would easily buy it. If you live in a condo, if you have a room that's 12 feet wide by 18, 20 feet long, the system will easily fit. And it's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. I, did, I didn't get around to trying those, but I can't imagine wanting much more. Um, yeah, it, it's maybe not as sexy as a Macintosh with big, large speakers. And if you like to play your music really, really loud, um, maybe you'd want the bigger speakers that they make, you know, the, the Ambers. But when I play jazz, when I play most orchestral music, when I play some EDM, when I play Beyonce, I, I have almost no complaints. That's the highest recommendation I can give you. So, for those of you who have never had a chance to hear these, um, reach out to me uh, if you're local, Let's set up an appointment uh, already tomorrow. We've got three or four set up, if I'm not wrong, and these just started breaking in. Um, anyway, thanks for watching this long preamble, and I apologize for being verbose as usual. Verbal diarrhea, my kids call it. Um, but I appreciate that you watch it, and I would love your comments. I really do. Um, I, I get a kick out of reading your comments. Even when you disagree or when you slag me, it's okay. I, I don't take it personally. I want to read your comments. One of the things I really want to try and do is create a community of, of people who enjoy music, who have fun in this, uh, with this industry, and uh, hopefully we can do that. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.